From too many options shortlisted, the one place that ticked for most of the checkboxes was finalized, and with fingers crossed, boarded the flight from Miami. With mixed reviews from people about this country, I was hoping my first one to South America shouldn't disappoint. While this country was planned for a bachelor's party of a close friend a few years ago, the party never kicked off then, and the place was further intriguing by a famous web series in Netflix. As I get the passport emblazoned with the coveted South American stamp, I had to immediately pull out the jacket from my check-in bag. 4. I didn't realize the city is a valley surrounded by Andes on all sides. As the taxi maneuvers the narrow lanes of the downtown, it was like every street was competing for a, who's the most colorful, competition. Graffiti culture being quite prominent in Colombia, street art gave an enigmatic facelift for Medellin. A stroll across these colorful streets was terribly refreshing after the long-haul overnight flights. Medellin, famous for its bakeries, had options plethora, yet with a handful for a vegetarian like me. Taking a quick bite, I was heading for a city tour to understand more about the culture, people and their lifestyle. The first few hours, I was in absolute denial for the fact that people don't speak English here, and this includes even tour guides, most of them, if not all. Tourists also hail from one of the surrounding South American countries which made it further interesting for the entire trip. While communication certainly made it interesting, it never was challenging for the entire trip, since humanity never fails to help and support while in need. Cassandra, our guide for the day, considering the only non-Spanish tourist in the bus, made slow commentary, while Alex, a fellow tourist from Texas did the complete translation all through the tour. Starting with Parque de las Luces, once a notorious neighborhood, is today decorated with 300 pillars that illuminates every night and add color to the already vibrant city. This was followed by a cute little hill that gave a panoramic view of the entire city, called, Pueblito Paisa. While Cassandra spoke about the prominent people who bought a change to the once infamous city known for its drug cartels, the one that interested me was that of Deborah Arango, a rebel artist who was almost excommunicated for her bold paintings and today has her photo in the 2000 peso bills. For Medellin known for its exuberant nightlife and intense partying, staying in the right neighborhood certainly pays for having extended night outs. With an early morning tour to a nearby town, Guadalupe, for its beautiful rock and some authentic Colombian experience, I couldn't extend my night out beyond midnight. Guadalupe, one of the most picturesque towns ever witnessed, started with the country's landmark Inselberg, El Peñón de Guadalupe. This monolith, with its 700 steps lets one reach its pinnacle to enjoy the rewarding scenery with islets that houses either an expensive Airbnb or a holiday home of today's billionaires, that once were owned by Pablo Escobar and his aides. The refreshing climb was followed by a visit to the colorful village of Guadalupe. The public square of this hamlet, referred to as Zocalos in Spanish, was splashed with colors, decorated with tiny little fountains, statues and shops, was such a visual treat, that one couldn't get enough of. Walking through these cobbled streets for souvenir shopping and finally hitting the umbrella street with hundreds of colorful umbrellas donning the alley is certainly an Instagrammer's delight. Tasting some of the best Colombian chocolates and guzzling coffee incessantly, spending those few hours in these fairy tale streets seemed like a whiff. In this remote part of the planet, something vivid catches my attention. A fruit seller having a makeshift arrangement, sports Lord Krishna's photo, calling his shop, Nutri Hari, notices my Indian looks and shouts out, Hari Hari, Hari Govinda. That moment, in this unknown village across the globe with not even a soul able to communicate in English, but a special darshan in a fruit shop banner was super revitalizing and exhilarating. The day's trip ended with a boat ride negotiating the islets with a closer look of Pablo's once sprawling peninsular mansion. Today, this structure, a dilapidated framework of rubbles, just to remind of his indelible antics as an infamous drug lord. Bidding adieu to Medellin, the next destination was Cartagena, the northern coastal city that enjoys not just the Caribbean waters, but the lifestyle too. Navigating to my hotel in the narrow streets of the walled city, also known as the colonial town, 
this place was only setting the bar to a different level on what the country has to further offer. Again with a quick day tour, to get a hang of this city, the colorful party bus we boarded certainly gave a hint for what the city has to offer for the later part of the day. With almost 45% of the natives having an African descent, the Afro-Colombian culture gave the added vibrancy from the dressing, to art, music and food. As the dusk set in, the whole town was getting ready for their daily carnival with street shows, music, cerveza and the Spanish rappers doing extempore on the various tourists for a peso or two. With all this keeping the evening busy, what attracted the most for me was a big fat authentic Colombian wedding. The post-wedding procession of the newlyweds on the streets, dancing cumbia, a blend between European, African and indigenous cultures, originated in Colombia's Caribbean coast. This was a spectacle for sure. The next day was for the beautiful Rosario Islands that certainly held the spirit of the country and the vibe of the Caribbean to a large extent. Hopping across the many pristine beaches with snorkeling and swimming in each of them, Gracie, our tour guide for the day, advised, I should get back to the city by evening to not miss my flight back to the US. The event post-sunset was to swim with the bioluminescent plankton. As the boat enters a particular region of the waters, the plankton comes to life, leaving a trail of sparking diamonds in your wake. While the rest of the boat jumps in the water at dark just to create the otherworldly sparkles, I was enjoying the view from the comfort of the boat. With one part of my mind enjoying this natural wonder, the other was quite disquieted, reminding me of any further delay, will make me rebook about four flights to my way back home, jumping across three continents. However, it was the insane half that emerged victorious. What is life without witnessing the bioluminescence in the deep waters of Colombia, notwithstanding the cost of the risk. Albeit communication was tough, connecting with people was never. A solo trip to this impromptu destination across continents, will certainly go down the memory lane. While the whole trip started with Raleigh, meeting a cousin after years and a friend to whom I give a send-off from his five-year-long US sojourn, the trip ends with Miami, the city I wanted to visit for the longest of time. It did give me a quick glance into its main areas from the big bus and a quick boat that introduced us to the millionaire's beach houses. I now look forward to the trip of the year.